Frog Gaming Podcast. You are joined by your usual hosts here. We've got Ryan. Hello. We've got Tom. Hello. And myself, Josh. How 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 are we both doing? We are going to start with Tom. There we go. There we go. See. You don't say how are you both doing. You say how are you doing, Tom, and then we move on to Ryan. But it's fine. It's, we'll get in there. You're the prepared. hierarchy. The hierarchy has been established. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't have to be Tom first. We can put yourself first if you want. It seems weird to ask yourself how you're doing, but it's definitely an option. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, you never ask me how I'm doing. So, I always you know. ask you how you're doing, actually. <laughs> right, right after you've asked me, and, and in recent incidents, Ryan, I, I will always ask you how you are. Usually semi sarcastically, and usually cutting you off before you actually get a chance to properly answer. But I do ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, how am I? Uh, my hair fever's been a bit of a, a douche. Uh, you probably hear it. Um, but other than that, I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah, I've had a, a busy week. I've been enjoying. Some of the nicer weather, which has been a, a bit of a luxury. Uh, getting out for a few walks, playing some computer games. Not really played any board games or anything like that, but I've done a bit of role playing as well. And I've got a mm-hmm. bit more coming up this weekend. So uh, this was my Star Wars. I say my Ryan plays them and you play one of them as well. Our Star Wars week. Um, mm-hmm. So I had uh, my, my myriad of Star Wars games on, which was fun. Uh, and then I've got Warhammer tonight and Critical Role called the Nether Deep tomorrow. So busy, nice. busy week. Um, How are you, Ryan? There we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, similar week to yourself. Like I had um, a lot of uh, computer gaming, not very much in the way of board gaming uh, because of you know conflicts in schedules. But uh, um, it's been good. I've been enjoying these. Uh, brighter afternoons for the for the walk to and from work um and probably gonna get out there uh after the podcast to be honest because it's still pretty nice out there um but yeah uh, star wars this week uh again i've got uh, warhammer tonight and the uh nether deep tomorrow uh looking forward to actually getting into nether deep again you know nether deep as well because my character passed away like two sessions ago or like mm-hmm. session yeah black um session before last uh do, do you want to talk about it or shall I? it was it was just the terminology of passed away is a very genteel way of describing what happened what to ha- your character yeah. yeah um i got chuckles brothers into oblivion is probably the better way to describe it um my character uh let's you know just real quick my character was unconscious after a brutal fight uh, in a flooding chamber uh we're up on a high ledge and we're trying to determine the best way to go back so either we've got the option of walking back through the path that we took to get there Mm -hmm. which is like long but we you know it's it's through a couple of dark tunnels but we know it's all safe or we drop the people off this ledge down to the person below one by one this is like a 30 40 foot drop Okay. Uh, my get you know, so my character stabilized, and uh, the player in question is like, "Okay, I'll I'll lower this guy down to you." Rightly so. Tom was like, "Well, that's that's like thirty foot of falling damage. You're going to take a de- failed death save on that one, even if he's caught safely." Uh, and then I fail a death save. Somebody fails to stabilize. I failed my second death save, and that was all she wrote of uh, of that character. Uh... It was it was so like ridiculous as well because like th- they were having the conversation so the two there were two of them still conscious and two of them unconscious mm. mm-hmm. and the two of them that are still conscious are like it'll be fine though like if we if like i'll lower him down so it's a 40 foot drop is like, i'll lower him down and you catch him and i'm like right that that accounts for maybe like 10 foot if we're being like generous like you're you're dropping someone and it's trying to contextualize that okay he's stable right but he has taken massive damage, hence why he's unconscious. He's mm-hmm. just watching George's dog running backwards yeah. and forwards in the background. Keep going, keep going, guys. Um, so he's, he's taken massive amounts of damage, right? This guy's like barely hanging on to life. And you take this person and you just like lower them over a 40 foot drop and go, just catch him. 
it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be okay. Rather than just walking down a admittedly fairly lengthy uh, and an imposing tunnel, but as you mentioned, relatively safe, uh, they went for this plan, and it ended as you would expect. I think the the player in question who did the drop in did feel quite bad about it. Uh, yeah. After the fact, they they kind of admitted themselves on the next session. They were like, "That was dumb. <laughs> that was that was not my best moment." Yeah. There's- it's so easy to like overlook that sort of stuff when you're in the middle of a session, yeah. though, and you're you're not you're just you're in a bit of a flap because like two of your two of you get your party yeah. are unconscious and you just completely forget to consider like oh yeah that that that's not gonna work out the way that we think it will work out. Like two of us were unconscious and another one was dead. Like we had a GM NPC who fell mm. in that fight as well. So mm. like I imagine the stress they were under. Yeah, um, and I can't blame them for it, and it also means I get to play a rogue for Yay. the first time in a little while in in fifth ed. So that's fun. Yeah, I'd be quite uh, quite liking your new character. I liked your old character. It's not like a I've got rid of one that I didn't like, but uh, I do like your new character. But you mentioned as well after we did the first session with them, we've got like the majority of the, the team now have got Eastern European accents as well because <laughs> of the the setting. <laughs> Yeah, also, also, like, my immediate jump... Is, he's a cat folk, so my immediate jump is Khajiit uh, from uh, Skyrim and Oblivion and my butchering of an Eastern European accent. Of course. Uh, that's the best part of RPGs, is doing silly accents. Funny voices time is great. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Josh, aside from distracted by something else? <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm just listening out to Red. Yeah, he's got one of my old trainers now. <laughs> 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 just so run past and like toss it in the air and grab Victory. it. <laughs> the shoe is it's mine. Fi- it's fine because it's an old pair that oh, I just keep right. by the back door for letting him out. Mm-hmm. But I'd rather he didn't. Oh, he's got one of his toys now. Well, the like shoe's no one of his toys. Yeah. <laughs> one of the ones that make a lot of noise. <laughs> he's having fun. He's, yeah. he's having a great time. Yeah, he's having a fun. He was he, poorly he, he, last night. I was saying before we hit record. So it's nice that he's he's recovered from that. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan's cat's just jumped onto camera as well. This is Pet's Corner. <laughs> it, uh, it is. We had, liter- we had Literature Corner last week. We got Pet's Corner today. Yeah. I feel left out. I don't. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'll bring my pet in. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there's Baby Yoda or Grogu. That's That's as, Grogu. As close as I get to a pet, I'm not allowed to. I mean, it's very low maintenance, so I will say that. It does fall over quite a lot, though. Oh. I'm just doing it now, in fact. There we go. Stay up. So um, how are you, Josh? Yes, other other than uh, other than red. <laughs> I'm grand. I'm grand. I, I was in one of the aforementioned Star Wars games uh, last week, and yeah, it was proper squeaky bum time. Um, made some clutch skill checks. Tom You're, was getting, Tom, you, Tom's you, laughing at the fact that my dog Red is still bounding around in the, in the background, but I'm going to just plow on through with this. Um, I was going to say, um, you have you had some of the more, more clutch roles of that session oh yeah it was like if, if you fail this josh things are gonna go real bad real quickly um but no we managed to uh stabilize the ship um and we kind of, we left it with the the big bad has captured the uh captain of the ship we're mm-hmm. trying to rescue her at the moment so shades of uh a previous mission yes but it's gonna go well this time I hope yes it will go better this time yeah so um yeah uh other than that not much i've been um i had a couple of my players come over and create their characters for this D D campaign that i'm going to be running oh yeah um, so we have trixie the tiefling rogue and fellows power shred the mountain dwarf bard um nice. i love it yeah i love it it also created miniatures on Hero Forge already. Um, that fellows has uh, fellows has got um, like punk rock style hair and a lute and bagpipes. So, like that's, that's always part of the fun of like coming up with the character concepts. Getting to like you know, like amongst mm-hmm. our circle, we always put it in Hero Hero Forge to like get the visualization of the mini. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I also want to say that Power Shred is a very strong established dwarven name. Comes from a long line of Power Shreds. <laughs> He's named after a brand of paper shredder that <laughs> a current has at work, and just thought it sounded like a funny name. That's a that's a good dwarf bard name though. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I I can't help but imagine their spells are power sliding on their knees, playing the lute. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, I think the original concept art had him playing a keytar as well, which, um, you Amazing. know, if I can make it happen, we'll make that happen. <laughs> yeah, just a uh, minor magical trinket that plays yeah. music, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Not game-breaking. Mm. There are two different kinds of bard players that I've found. There are what I call practical bard players, which are the people who go... I need to have a hand free so I can use a sword or cast spells or do whatever. Uh, so they'll pick like a one-handed instrument, which sounds dirty, uh, or like singing or dancing or something similar. Uh, or there are the opposite, which are uh, non-diegetic uh, instrument parts, which are I will play a guitar or I will play bagpipes or yeah. something similar. Uh and- I actually it, prefer the latter. It, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's all well and good to be like, I'm singing about our glory, I'm or- orating about this battle, or I'm playing a triangle and somebody's head's exploding. Yeah. Mm. Like, I, I genuinely do prefer that one. I just think it's funnier. Like, I know when we did our uh, Saturday game and Will's half and played bagpipes, um, I had a lot of, like, just random uh, copyright-free bagpipe music that I'd found that I would just put on, and people hated it. Like, you know, it was so annoying, because uh, not to diss, like, the, the cultural instrument of the, the place where myself and Ryan live, but bagpipes mm-hmm. are shite, and like, they just sound horrendous. And when you're playing that over your combat, it adds a certain ambiance. I will say, though, like, imagine being, like, the goblin or the kobold that is, uh, you know, threatening to ambush your party, and then you just hear this squeal of a bagpipe roaring up. It's like, what the hell is that? That is terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and, and and the balls of it as well, right? Like, you know, you're, you're a massive monster. You're attacking these bunch of dudes, and a couple of them, like, draw swords and balls, and another guy just draws out his horrendous sack of wind and just goes, goes lamb on it, you know, just hell for leather. That's ballsy. Yeah. I mean, you guys are talking about this as, this as if this isn't a thing that happened in real life. Like, the, in the British Army, they would have musicians march in with, like, the rest of the squad but, to sort of well, spur Mad, them on. Yeah, Mad Dog, I think, was, uh, like, the Scottish soldier who wielded a claymore and played bagpipes on, on, uh, on think, I think it was the Assault in Normandy, mm. uh, is, like, an inspirational figure. Yeah. And a... He's a madman. He was a madman, but he was a he was inspirational on the battlefield. I mean, I could could be wrong about this, and correct me if I am. Mm. But these people don't go into combat with like playing the instrument. Like they would no. be there, like marching up to like the battlefield and maybe like in the the lead in. But like when when things kick off, you know, they're not in the middle of the scrap. You know, no, they're, they're, away. They are, but they are like on the periphery of the fight. Playing, right, like okay. Scotland the Brave or mm. something like that. So, so that because what's the point in uh, if if your soldiers can't hear it or the enemy can't hear it either? Well, I thought they would use it as more like psych up music, you know, psych out yeah. music. You know, you'd use it to kind of get get your your guys going and to kind of freak out the enemy. And, you know, so it would freak me out if someone started playing bagpipes. Just in principle, it freaks me out when I walk down the street in Glasgow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I understand the psychological warfare behind it, um, but yeah, this it, just, it seems like a bit of a waste of manpower to be honest. I love the idea that just walking down the, just walking through the fringe in Edinburgh, you got what the psych, what the psychology of the matter was. Just yes. like bagpipes every three feet. It's like, nope, okay, I get it. One of the many reasons I hate Edinburgh. <laughs> oh wow. Dissing on everything today. I, 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 I'm sorry, Josh. I'm very open about my dislike of Edinburgh. It's just not a place I like. I was going to say, yeah, Tom's hatred of Edinburgh has been well documented on ah. this podcast previously. Yeah. So uh, if you guys want to listen to why Tom hates Edinburgh, <laughs> go check out our, previ- our previous episodes. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on Red. He's lying down now, so oh. hopefully he's nice and calm for the rest of the recording. Smash cut to him running through your guitar. <laughs> yeah, he does occasionally get the guitar with his tail and like plays a little note oh. by accident with it, which it always makes me smile. Um, I won't smile if he knocks it over and smashes it. Mm. That's, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. the downside. But uh, it's all fun games. (laughs) The joys of pet ownership. Anyway, we have things to actually talk about this week, don't we? So yeah, shall I? uh, I... Oh, sorry. No, no. After you, please. Will I uh, just start off with a a quick announcement regarding Tabletop Scotland, uh, and then we can get into the sort of the main course, the entree of uh, of this week's episode. But um, yeah, Tabletop Scotland have recently announced. uh, Folks who have previously been uh, will be aware that one of the things the convention provides is a games library. So for a small fee, you and your friends can go select a a board game from a library of literally hundreds and then go and sit in the open uh, gaming area and play that and just return it. So um, the, the company providing said games this year will be Rent shuffle and roll uh we'll provide a link to uh, their website in the uh, show notes uh they're an aberdeen based uh business who provide a uh, subscription service for board games so uh by all means check them out but yeah they're going to be there uh, providing the games library this year and uh the previous conventions i think I've, every single convention i've gone to I, i've at least rented one game for yeah. a period as well just to sit down and try something out i've never actually come across and this is a bit of ignorance on my part but i've actually never come across a subscription based board gaming service that's the first for me I've, I've, i know like games libraries you know where you mm-hmm. you go and like pick them up and take them back or like obviously like you get the cafes as well that have you know go and just play their games and stuff never seen subscription based that's an interesting idea yeah yeah, yeah. it certainly saves you on the uh, shelf space mm-hmm and the wallet space. <laughs> mm, mm. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but yes. Uh, so by all means, uh, check those guys out, and uh, that will be available at Tabletop Scotland, which is in seven weeks. Seven, seven weeks, weeks, yeah. Seven weeks, yeah. We'll, we'll maybe be able to squeeze our game in. We managed it last year, I think. So yeah, yeah. we played a couple at the end of uh, the last day. It was on the end of Sunday. We managed to squeeze play games in which was what did we play i can't it was like there was a pirate uh, game wasn't there i remember that yeah there was also one where it was the uh penguin subatio sort of thing oh god oh ice, ice cool. cool ice cool i love ice yeah. cool i hate ice cool why That's do fun. you hate ice Co- why do you hate fun tom <laughs> I mean, for the same reason i hate most things <laughs> wow oh uh, it's just uh it, it like I don't is like it... Subutio, right? And it's, it's right. fundamentally Subutio, like with slightly different uh, objectives and aesthetics. Uh, and uh, some I've waxed on at length before. I, I like games that have a narrative thing mm. going to it. And that's just chaos of, you know, knocking a penguin around a board. Uh, excuse me. They are truant penguin students trying to avoid their teacher in high school. That and they they're trying to grab fish in the in the school hallways. So there's your narrative, Tom. I think you can make a movie out of that. I didn't realise uh, Josh was such an ice cool savant. <laughs> uh, I I I think it's just great fun. It's dumb. It's completely dumb. But, I, yeah, that's the charm. I can agree that it was pretty uh, pretty dumb, but I agree it was fun. Like I I it's, I don't often play like dexterity based board games. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of them are just like. You know, turn based or tactical, um, yeah. but that was fun. It was a good. It was a good departure from what I normally play. Yeah, the thing is, I'm being cynical about it, unsurprisingly. Um, but I, I had fun in the moment with it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's okay. just afterwards, I'm like, what was I doing? What am I doing with my <laughs> life? <laughs> just sitting on the train on the way home, looking at your hands, like yeah. I've I've sullied my fingers by playing penguins about you. They used yeah. to be such strong hands. <laughs> Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh no, I'm sad. We're we're staring we're we're steering this conversation away from whatever direction 
that was heading. Do you not know uh, what that's a reference to? It's not dirty. Like it's never I actually story. don't know what that's a reference it's to. It's never no, ending right. story. It's the it's the rock um, giant saying these were such strong hands. It's been years since I've watched that. It doesn't matter. Story. You should be able to quote it verbatim. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so apologies for not getting the never ending story reference. In any case, let's try and keep this on topic. I know that's unusual for me to do. I was going to say, this is a bit yeah. pot kettle black, isn't yeah. it? So, um, so it's a bit late for that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Have um, any episodes? But, but Tom, yes, we've got uh, another bit of news that you wanted to bring to the table. Yeah, we've not really talked about this before, um, which is maybe a little bit of a, an oversight on our parts, but um, we've got the Any Awards coming up uh, in August, uh, August mm. the 5th. The, the results are being revealed. So uh, for those of you who, who don't know, uh, the Any Awards are basically sort of, uh, uh, they're, they're mainly for like role-playing games for the most part and kind of uh, published material for for different uh, systems and games and mm -hmm. uh, from different publishers as well. Uh, so they've got a bunch of different categories. Uh, I won't go over all of them, but you've got things like best adventure, uh, best cover art, best interior, best cartography, which is quite a cool category, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, best free game, best game, best monster, uh, best organized play, uh, uh, best podcast is in there. We're not on the list, which is uh, very frustrating. Uh, I want to stop talking about them right now. <laughs> uh, best setting, best supplement, uh, and best product of the year. Uh, the reason this actually came to our attention, so I, I think I've been aware of the Ennies before, and, and Ryan, you have as well, mm -hmm. uh, kind of loosely. Josh, you'd never heard of them, though, had you, before today? No. Um, no. The reason it kind of... Uh, Ryan brought it up uh, because Critical Role uh, have actually been nominated... Uh, for best setting for uh, Taldor Taldori campaign setting reborn, which is published by their publishing win, yeah. uh, wing, uh, Darrington Press. Uh, they've got some uh, interesting uh, competition, and, and to be honest, it's nothing I've ever heard of before. So I think they've got a fairly good shot. Uh, not to besmirch the others that are in their category, but I think with the weight they've got behind them, I would be surprised if they didn't win it. Um, Historia's in there, uh, Eldritch Sentry's in there. But I was looking at some of the others as well, and there's uh, one that we've uh, touched on before, Josh, is uh, the Roots got an RPG. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. And that's that's been nominated for Best Supplement for the Travellers and Outsiders. Uh, so Roots in there. Call of Cthulhu's uh, got a few, uh, is nominated in a few different categories. Mm -hmm. As well, uh, the new Dune from Modifius, uh, the Dune setting, uh, that's been nominated for Best Writing. Uh, Call Cthulhu and Root and Dune uh, have all been nominated for Product of the Year. So loads of um, really interesting things uh, coming up in that. Uh, and as I think Ryan mentioned this before we started recording, some of these uh, not even heard of. Uh, so mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to have a look at... Uh, the, what these are because you know it's always nice to kind of branch out a little bit um but yeah that we thought that was kind of worth talking about uh just kind of touching on uh the any awards and uh some of the also, things that have been nominated i also do like that there's the best aid or accessory because like you get the things like your uh hero labs and um like your hex roll and things and they don't always get like a, the notice mm -hmm. yeah. so like having a best digital and not digital um accessory um category is pretty good as well so you got like the the prop set for call cthulhu um like different things like the uh call cthulhu um 3d props for like hex for sorry not hex for um what's it called uh name's gone entirely now what's it called um <laughs> No, it's a dig it's a three D uh, digital platform where you can host your RPGs. That I, uh, is completely gone at my head. It's on Steam and it's also on the tip of my tongue as well. Tailspire, uh, that was it. <laughs> Sorry. Tailspire. Tailspire. That is not the one I was thinking of. <laughs> no, there's multiple ones like Tabletop Simulator and so on as well. 
I have issues with tabletop simulator, but we won't no? get into that. Are these documented or? These have been documented. Yeah, I mean, okay. we can we can go over it again. To be fair, but um, we're talking about something else. So. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll circle back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So no, it's it's uh, like I like Tom said. I was totally unaware that this was a thing. I, I'm not surprised it's a thing. <laughs> and and yeah, and just to echo Ryan's sentiment, like there's a lot of these companies wouldn't ever normally get any sort of attention in a sort of industry awards cer- uh, ceremony. So it's nice to see like categories like best accessory um, because they're, they're in, if not important, they're really cool to own. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Um, it's, it's good to see, you know, different publishers and, and smaller things just getting, getting mentioned, especially, you know, alongside some of the more established things like Call of Cthulhu and, and Critical Role. Um, and, and I'll be interested to see, you know, what kind of wins out uh, in those. Yeah. See if the, the new stuff, you know, does kind of get a, a fair shot. Because I, I don't really know uh, entirely how they come to the decisions on this. It's the, There does seem to be a submissions and nominees area, but then I think it's, I think it's voted for publicly maybe but then there are judge applications as well so there's maybe maybe anyone can be a judge if you get accepted and then they decide yeah. the winners who knows i think you have to have some like credentials credentials and experience in the rpg uh, spaces but yeah I, I imagine it would be whoever's interested in like awarding and not and noticing like the hard work that people put in every year yeah no, that's good. That's really good. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on that, uh, and we'll we'll keep an eye out for what the the results are come August, uh, and we'll feed back on that. I've been looking at a lot of the cover and interior art, and like, um, I probably wouldn't have picked up these uh, books had I like not seen the detail of the artwork inside. Like Historia looks brilliant. Yeah, uh, I'm actually thinking of picking it up. Uh, I think <laughs> we've mentioned this on the the podcast before, but it's one that always gives me a chuckle. Is the uh, the thirsty sword lesbians has been nominated for a few things as well. Um, that's from so right, an Evil yeah. Hat, rightly so, because the artwork um, and the attention to detail inside is pretty good. To, and I've heard good reports about people, you know, from people who've actually played it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's got a very sort of comic. Uh, art style on the cover mm. um it is actually it's really nice very sort of bright as well and colorful uh, i just i love the fact that uh, i think we brought this up the last time we spoke about it like the rules are are based around sword fighting and flirting <laughs> at the same time it's just no, that... i like that it reminds me of monkey island I think no, you, yeah. you got a different read on Monkey Island to me. Yeah, I like don't think the, no, 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 like it's like it's like the insult sword fighting in Monkey Island. To yeah, me. Like, I get you. You, you. you have to match up the right response to the right insult, and that helps you do better. Like I'm assuming it's a similar sort of thing. Yeah, I think you it's... might be right. Uh, although, as I say, I don't really know. In in, ter- in terms of tone, perhaps not. But like in idea, in spirit, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think if uh, if Monkey Island had uh, flirtatious banter between uh, was it Guy Threepwood and Guy Brush Threepwood and uh, the demon Chuck. ghost zombie pirate Lechuk. Yeah, yeah. It, would have, it would have a very different ending, I imagine. I mean, let's be, be honest; it's probably on the internet. If, if yeah, you're... <laughs> yeah. It would be it would be less like the ending of Monkey Island and more like that. Um that eponymous story about rolling several natural ones and ending up marrying the, the orc warlord. <laughs> that should be natural 20s, if yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that's quite an interesting one. Uh, I'm uh, I'm getting distracted because I'm looking at the list and I'm like, oh, what well, that's about. So I'm going uh, yeah. to yeah. stop looking at this that. This is what we're all going to do after Yeah, we're going to put it in, in this. <laughs> it's like, ooh, new games. I suppose that that in itself it means it's serving its purpose, right? A lot of these games that wouldn't get a look in, uh, uh, getting brought to the attention of the masses. So there we well, go. that's it. It brings brings a bit of a spotlight onto things that might otherwise be overlooked, which is is never a bad thing. And 
you know, it's got to be a confidence uh, boost as well to these smaller studios, yeah. you know, to be kind of in the running for these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And maybe next year we'll be on the uh, podcast list. Get on it, folks. Mm-hmm. Nominate us. <laughs> Not hold our breaths. Those two uh, listeners are really going to have to hammer the nominations for yeah. us. <laughs> the, judge, the judges listen to us like they they talk about their pets for like thirty minutes, the games for maybe fifteen, you know, maybe five, and then they just waffle off. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. What, what Approved. Else do you want? Stamp. Yeah. I go. mean, I'd vote for us. I'm slightly biased. <laughs> yeah. Slightly biased. You know. But I, I remember. Was, anyway, Josh, why do you hate tabletop simulator? <laughs> yeah, let's go back why to do that. I hate tabletop simulator. The, that so I'm gonna say I'm gonna caveat this. I understand why this is the case because, but it still it is an absolute resource hog for a computer mm. to play games that shouldn't be a resource hog. So games like Wingspan, it is like. I, I, it, this is more from when I had my previous laptop mm. and it would struggle to run anything on Tabletop Simulator. Now, I understand that it is because it's not just a way of playing games. Tabletop Simulator is a virtual environment. Mm-hmm. So it's rendering a lot. Mm. And it's, do, it's doing a lot. So it's probably not fit for the purpose that I want for it, basically. I, I want something simpler where I'm just playing the game. You would just want like a literal like black background of a table with mm. the game board on, the, on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't space. want a, th- a 3D rendered environment. Um, it's designed for VR, isn't it? Tabletop Simulator. Um, That's one of its functions. Yeah. Yeah, it, you can backdoor into VR with it. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I don't know if. Uh, sorry, Tom. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I don't know if uh, if it is designed initially with VR in mind, mm. or if you know that was something that happened at a later point. Mm. I think it might but, be the latter. I think it might have like tabletop simulator first, and then VR experience second. I think the thing is with tabletop simulator specifically is mm. it's not designed for any one game, so you couldn't do it the way you kind of want it josh because mm. there are so many different kinds of games that it needs to accommodate like you can play there's war game mods there's card game mods there's board game mods mm. you know it, it would arguably be harder to have uis for each of those individual things rather than having yeah. it where you can just because the thing with with tabletop simulator and it's what i kind of don't like about it is there's it, it doesn't really do anything for you for the most part. You know, it's, mm. you kind of have to manually play the game as you would at a table, which is supposed to be part of the novelty. And I'm not taking that away from it, mm. but it's quite frustrating because you kind of have to set the game up for, for mm. them. Like in some cases, they'll kind of it'll pop up partially set up. Um, but I remember we played it. I'm not sure which one of you were there. If you were both there, there was a day we played Betrayal on it, and it was like you were trying to put the pieces down and like get it to like turn the boards yeah. mm. then you're like just put the, you're like, just put the thing down it was like your hand didn't work you know you're just kind of waving this piece around like a blunt weapon or something do you often wave your piece around like a blunt weapon tom i mean not since the uh the hearing <laughs> <laughs> not since the incident <laughs> but today's the anniversary <laughs> On that note. <laughs> yeah. Are we drawing that to a close? <laughs> right. Guys, as always, thank you very much for listening. And until next time, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.